Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today I have the last game of the series between the 1994 American League Boston Red Sox and the 1978 Detroit Tigers. With Detroit again playing at home, Detroit comes into this third and final game of the series, though, having lost both of the previous games. So they need to win this game just to pull out one victory against the 94 Sox. Uh, the Red Sox will have Joe Hesketh on the mound. And uh, the Detroit Tigers are going to have Mr. Jim Slayton on the mound. So, without further ado, let's get into the game. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got to turn the sound down. There you go. All right. Let's get it going here. Um, Otis Nixon leading off for the 94 Red Sox against Jim Slayton. Parrish behind the plate. That's the battery is Slayton and Parrish. And Nixon's out. Hatcher is the next man up. Notice I got my uh, DC Defenders hat on. From all reports that I've seen, the uh, XFL is not dead. It will be back. The Rock, apparently, has taken over the league. So, um, to keep it going, we'll see. Ron LaFleur leading off for the Tigers after the Red Sox got nothing in the top of the first. It looks like he's got a single. Yeah, he does, and he's going to try to steal. We got to do everything we can to try to get uh, try to get Detroit to win here. Lou Whitaker, sweet Lou. No, again, I made that mistake. Sweet Lou is Nella. But anyway, Lou Whitaker is on, and so now we got Rusty Staub. Up. Two on, no outs against Hesketh. He's in trouble. And now the bases are loaded. This looks good for the Tigers to pull out a win here. Jason Thompson up. And that was a, he walked in a run. Hesketh is just really not on top of his game today with Walk and Fuss up at the plate. Looks like Walk and Fuss is going to pop out. Steve Kemp up, one of their best hitters. Looks like he lays to hit, and I'm going to hold the runners. Uh, one out, though, and it's 2 nothing. and Aurelio Rodriguez, here we go. First game that we've seen Aurelio Rodriguez, I think, at third base, and he's going to hit something probably over Nixon's head and knock in a lot of runs here. I'm going to send the lead runner. I'm going to say, yeah, let's do that. And Hesketh is tired, and there was no outs on that. It's 5 nothing. So Hesketh is already going to have to be replaced, and they bring in Fossis, who was really a loogie. So I don't know why they brought him in, but um, especially against a right-handed batter. But, uh, yeah, Parrish leases a double and knocks him in, so that's going to be another run. It's 6 nothing. My cat has come into the room wanting attention, which is too bad for him. Trammel. Looks like Trammel may be out. He may be out. He was. And that brings up Ron LaFleur. Big Ron. Ron LaFleur back to the... Is that the top of the order? So they got six runs right there. And that brings up Jose Valentin for the 94 Sox against Slayton. I, you got to believe Slayton can hold this lead. Cooper is up. Scotty Cooper. And that's going to be one out. No, two out. That's, that's the second out. I think that's the okay, now. So that's going to be, uh, yeah, the second out. And now Mike Greenwell, the Gator, is up. 
and he's going to ground out to second. So the Red Sox go harmlessly again in the second, having to make up six runs with Lou Whitaker up. And he's out, so Rusty Staub is up. And he's out, and that brings up Jason Thompson. So uh, Fossis has uh, he got him out of the first inning debacle that they were in, and uh, held him held the Tigers scoreless in the second. But Andre the Hawk Dawson is up against Slayton. What do you got there? Nope, easy out, line out. Tim Naring, Timmy Naring. That's going to be maybe a slow dribbler that gets him on base. It does. And that brings up Damon Berryhill with a man on and only one out. And you know, if the, if the Red Sox can chip away, if they can start just chipping away right now, it's early enough that they can do that. Otis Nixon is up with two down and nearing it. And he walks, and that brings Hatcher to the plate. Let's see what he can do. Uh, there was a pass ball, so runners are now at second and third with two down and Hatcher up. And that's an, that's an out. So the Red Sox get nothing there in the third. They're still down by six. Walking Foss up against Fossus. That's a fly out. Kemp is up. He's on. He got a he got it past Vaughn. Got that that liner past Vaughn, and that brings up Aurelio Rodriguez, who is out, and that brings up Larry Parrish, one for one with a double. And he is out. So Mo Vaughn is up. Mo Vaughn's down. He's, he's gone. That brings up Valentin with one out here in the fourth. Red Sox batting in the top of the fourth. He's out. And that brings up Scott Cooper. The Red Sox really have not mounted much of a real threat at all yet. And may not with Slayton pitching like this. Trammell is up at the plate against Fossus. And he lines a base hit. That brings up LaFleur. The floor looks like he is going to be on. He's on. Nice. Two on with no outs and Whitaker up. And Whitaker hits it to the outfield. Let's see if Hatcher can play that. Yep, he can. That's going to be one down. Fossus is tired, of course, because he's really a loogie. He usually only faces one batter, but he's even out there dealing, and he's tired. And he got Rusty Staub out. And that brings up Jason Thompson. So they're going with a tired Fossus. They're just determined that a tired Fossus is better than anybody they got, which I tend to think might actually be true. I've seen that Red Sox bullpen, and it's horrible. So you got Walk and Fuss facing. Now they bring in Howard. Some dude named Howard. I don't even know that guy. And this is gone. Is this gone? It is. That's a grand salami for uh, John Walk and Fuss. Crazy. Well, now it's 10 nothing. So... Uh, what do we got here? We got Greenwell batting for the Red Sox in the top of the fifth with the Red Sox down 10. You don't like to see that. 
if you're a Red Sox fan, at least. If you're a Tigers fan, yeah, it's great. So Andre the Hawk Dawson. Looks like he's going to get a ground out to Thompson, and that's two down, and that brings up Nairing. And that's a walk. So they walk Nairing to give way to Damon Berryhill. And Damon Berryhill is probably going to fly out to the floor. So that's it. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. The top of the fifth having been done, the Red Sox still having gotten no runs. They can't really break through on Slayton. And now here is Aurelio Rodriguez, and he's out. Larry Parrish has a double today, one for two with a double. Looks like he grounds out, and that brings up Trammell. And Trammell is going to lace a hit. That'll be his second hit of the day. And Ron LaFleur up. No need to steal with Trammell and rub it in. I think 10 runs should be sufficient, especially with the way Slayton is dealing. So Nixon is facing Slayton in the top of the sixth. That's going to be a line out or ground out. Billy Hatcher up. And that's going to be, he's safe, infield hit. And that brings up Mo. Got to go to Moe's. Mo Vaughn. Now it's getting a little late for the Red Sox just to chip away. They're going to have to have a big inning somewhere. And they got runners at second and third with one out against Valentin. And Slayton had 234 or something innings pitched this year, so he's not a guy who's going to get tired that kind of quick. And there's two down now. The Red Sox may strand these two guys, Scotty Cooper up, but they don't. Scott Cooper looks like he knocked in at least one of the runs. We're going to hold the other runner. Or maybe I sent him. I don't know. Maybe I hit the wrong thing and sent him, but it worked, so... Greenwell is up the Gator, two down, two runs in now. And it looks like the Gator might have either, probably has a double. No, it was a home run. So the Red Sox got four of their own, and they've cut the deficit to six. Although that's not really good. <laughs> Andre Dawson, there, he's out. So. The Red Sox got four of their own to cut the deficit from 10 runs down back down to six, the original six, as we like to say in hockey. And uh, Whitaker is out. Staub is up. It's going to be a ground out to Valentin. And Thompson with two down here in the bottom of the sixth. And it looks like he's going to have a fly out to Nixon. So Tim Nearing's up for the Red Sox in the seventh. Now they got three innings to get six runs, which, if you do the math on that, it's an average of two runs per inning. So they either have to have a really huge inning or they got to have, you would think they'd have to, well, they do have to average two per inning. So. Damon Berryhill is going to hit what looks like a fly out with um, no outs. So that's one down with Nixon up, nearing a board. This, is, uh, this Red Sox team is resilient. They're a tough team. Two on, Billy Hatcher up. And that is maybe a fly out to Walk and Puss. And it is. So there's two down with Mo up at the plate. Now, if Mo hits a home run here, it gets interesting. Or or even really a single and knocks in. I, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to uh, stop the other runner from advancing. Slayton's tired, but I'm going to keep him out there. It's, you know, it's still 10 to 5. 
and that looks like it's going to be a pop out. So Slayton gets out of the inning. And uh, that brings up Lock and Fuss. Lock and Fuss in the bottom of the seventh. He may have a home run. Nope, he's out. Caught it at the wall. Steve Kemp up with one down. He's going to ground out to Vaughn, to Vaughn, yeah. And then that brings up Aurelio Rodriguez. And he's out. I'm going to go. I'm going to take Slayton out now since the. Uh, we're going to bring in Glenn. Oh, wait a minute. I hope I didn't do that. I hate it when the computer gets like this. Okay, yeah, I didn't do that. All right, so I'm going to bring in Glenn. All right. Got to use the pad. Prefer to use my mouse, but uh... all right. So Glenn is in to pitch for Slayton, who got tired after getting dragged a little bit there in the last two innings for five runs. And Scott Cooper is facing Glenn and is going to pop out. That brings up Greenwell, the Gator. They're gonna need. You gotta believe they gotta. They're gonna need a run here. They're down by five, so at least one. Dawson up the hawk. And he is going to have a single. Is he? No. Nope. He's out. So, bottom of the eighth. Larry Parrish batting against Howard. And he's out. Trammel's up. And he is out. And Chris Howard is tired. Let's see if they replace him. They do with Scott Bankhead. And that brings up Ron LaFleur to bat against Bankhead. And it's ball four, so he's aboard. Lou Whitaker up with two down. And that's an out. So we go to the top of the ninth. The Red Sox are got to have five runs right here off at Glynn. And Nearing may have started that with a base hit. Let's see. Nope. Barry Hill up. And Barry Hill looks like he's out, and he is, and now that brings up Otis Nixon. And Otis Nixon, uh, let's see what happens here. It's a base hit for Nixon. He's aboard. Billy Hatton, no sense in stealing because they still need five runs, so... You got to have base runners. Scoring position, and Hatcher gets a single. Runners are at the corners, and again, Vaughn with a chance to hit a home run and make it interesting. But he doesn't. He strikes out, and that is the uh, that's the game. So there's the box score. You got the uh, Bean Towners going through their whole basically uh, bullpen, and then the Bengals using. Slayton and Glenn, Slayton getting the win. So that is that concludes our three-game series between the 78 Tigers and the 94 Red Sox, with the Red Sox having won the first two and uh, Detroit having run, won the, uh, the rubber game, as they say. Um, 
look for another classic matchup from the history of baseball between two teams who never faced each other on the Sportsman Z Network. But for right now, that's it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And signing off. What the hell happened?